what has happened is that investors have completely thrown in the towel on a recession. A uh, recession was priced at 30 to 40% chance after the banking turmoil in 2023. If I look at the bond market, which I track very closely, the bond market is now pricing only a 10% chance of a recession over the next 12 months. As interest rates go up in the US, as inflation goes up in the US, it will make the dollar strengthen because the cost of debt that has been issued in dollar will move up. What happens when the dollar appreciates and the global economy slows is that your debt that are, that are denominated in dollars, they go up in value. So you have to pay more to service your debt. But what about your assets? What about your, your cash flows? If you're not selling stuff because the economy is slowing down, you're in trouble. And that's why during periods of crisis, we see the dollar appreciating. Alfonso Pecatiello, the founder and CEO of the Macro Compass, highlights the pressing concerns regarding fiscal deficits and the depreciation of the U.S. He points out that with a staggering $12 trillion of debt denominated in dollars, held outside the U.S. strengthening the dollar alongside a global economic downturn, could lead to significant trouble. 2023 ended without the technical recession economists expected, but their warning of stagflation and a potentially crippling debt crisis should not be easily dismissed. According to Societe Generale's chief global strategist Albert Edwards, most forecasters seem to have thrown in the towel on their recession calls, and that's making the environment feel dangerously similar to 2007. Unemployment data is also relatively noisy month to month, and it's possible that unemployment will retreat from its current 3.9% level for March. Looking beyond unemployment data, the U.S. yield curve has been inverted since 2022. This is often heralded as a recession indicator, as longer-term yields on government debt are lower than shorter-term rates. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York's research currently puts the probability of a U.S. before February 2025 at 58%. That's about as high as a forward-looking recession probability has been on this model since the 1980s. Pecatiello points out that the bond market indicates a 10% chance of a recession within the next 12 months. Investors have agreed with the Federal Reserve's expectation that it will cut interest rates just three times this year after a months-long standoff between markets and the central bank. Regarding monetary policy, Pecatiello suggests that the Federal Reserve may signal a higher neutral interest rate, indicating confidence in the economy's ability to withstand higher borrowing costs. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. If I look at the bond market, which I track very closely, the bond market is now pricing only a 10% chance of a recession over the next 12 months. Only 10%, okay? So 10% isn't zero, but it's a very low probability priced in in markets today. And instead, if you look at where the economic cycle is going, as we speak, you start to see the first signs that there is some potential weakness in the labor market. If you see the amount of full-time jobs that are being added by the US economy, it is coming down. If you see the amount of jobs added by the cyclical sectors of the economy, the ones more reactive to how the economy is doing, cyclical industries like manufacturing, transportation, or trade, they are not really hiring anymore. So you are seeing the first signs, right, that the hiking cycle of the Fed is playing a bit of its weakening role on the economy. Bond markets are not believing anymore into a recession. So right here, I think you have this opportunity of looking at this front end of the bond market, two to five year bond deals are still offering north of 4% yields that investors can look at, lock them in. And what they offer is the optionality that if the situation deteriorates, you are making money on these bonds you bought. And when there is blood on the streets, or as Warren Buffett used to say, when people are uh, uh, fearful, then you have an opportunity to be greedy. But right now, people aren't fearful. Right now, the market is greedy. Right now, you have uh, NFTs of penguins and monkeys being bought for half a million dollars each. You have um, strange meme coins going up 9,000% over the weekend. It's full animal spirits. When it's full animal, animal spirits, spirits, you're supposed to be more careful. Dollar will do in that case, it'll suck the system. It will deleverage the system. It will force everybody who has borrowed in dollars as interest rates go up in the U.S., as inflation goes up in the US, it will make the dollar strengthen because the cost of debt that has been issued in dollar will move up. And so all these companies outside the US that have borrowed in dollars will have a very hard time repaying their dollar liabilities. So the dollar will, will work as a black hole 
that will suck and deleverage the entire system until it basically is forced to implode and then we need an alternative. So the way to break the dollar system, funnily enough, Daniela, isn't an orderly way where you slowly walk away from the dollar. If you want to break the system based on the dollar, you have to face the monster in the eye, make the dollar suck the system, deleverage the system like a black hole. It's a very disruptive force. It's not an orderly unwind, but it might happen as a result of higher interest rates, higher inflation, pushing all the indebted countries and companies in dollar outside the US, force them to repay their dollar debt, to deleverage, to shrink their balance sheet, and basically to destroy the system from the within. But it is not an orderly de-dollarization. Yeah, I... The neutral rate is higher. So if you hear these words, it basically means that the Fed thinks this time is different. The US economy can handle four or 5% rates forever. Something has structurally changed, which often it isn't the case. This time is different, very expensive words in finance to use. So I think they will send this message to tell investors, eh, calm down, guys. We're not going to cut five, 10, 15 times. We're only going to do three cuts this year, maybe a couple more next year. And that's it because the neutral rate is that's higher. It. So prepare to handle mortgage rates at 6 and 7% for the foreseeable future. That's what they're going to try and say. The escalating debt of the United States poses a significant threat to the stability of the market unless the government reins in its spending promptly. According to projections under President Biden's administration, the U.S. debt held by the public is expected to reach 102.2% of GDP in 2025, up from 97.3% in 2023 and is anticipated to climb further to 106% by 2030, before gradually receding to 105.6% by 2034. Moreover, the budget deficit is forecasted to be 6.1% of GDP next year, with interest payments on servicing the U.S. debt projected to surpass $1 trillion annually by 2026. President Biden has unveiled a budget plan of $7.3 trillion for 2025, propelling U.S. debt beyond 100% of gross domestic product. This plan involves increased spending while aiming to generate savings of $3 trillion through higher taxes over the span of 10 years. Pecatiello sheds light on a more significant pattern, wherein politicians, who previously relied on fiscal deficits primarily during economic downturns, have transitioned to utilizing deficits regardless of the prevailing economic conditions. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. Am I not surprised that Biden or any other politician actually uh, would implement more fiscal deficits in the US? Seven trillion to come next year as well. So what's the playbook here more broadly, Daniela, is that politicians in the US once used to apply fiscal deficits when the economy was weak. So the idea was unemployment rate goes up, the economy is weak, will apply fiscal deficits, the economy recovers will tighten the belt a bit, right? Because fiscal deficits can be thought of as injecting new money and resources into the economy, right? You basically cut taxes, you make sure the economy can run hotter. So you need fiscal deficits when the economy is weakening, not when the economy is strong. And actually since Trump in 2016, but now also with Biden, it seems that a new era has started. The new era is politicians are going to use fiscal deficits regardless of economic conditions. They're just going to do trillions and trillions and trillions of fiscal deficits every single year. If you use fiscal deficits every year, regardless of economic conditions, sometimes you're going to be using fiscal deficits when the economy doesn't need it. So you're going to overheat the economy. And also right. when you get the economy used to this amount of fiscal deficits, when you use it during recession, it isn't going to be as effective. It's basically mm. like a permanent shot in the arm for the US economy that makes it less productive and makes it more prone to cycles, to a lot of swings of inflation and growth down the road and a lot more volatility upcoming. If you look in the past at any economy that has tried to use fiscal deficits as a feature of their structure, not as a cyclical way to repair weakness, what you find always is a lot of volatility in growth and inflation. So we have investors have been used to this smooth environment of predictable growth, predictable inflation for the last 10 to 15 years. As a result, the S&P 500 has returned on average for the last 15 years, over 16% a year. That's a ridiculous return on average to have for a single stock market investment. A very simple investment in the S&P 500 has quadrupled the money of investors. It's been smooth sailing, but if you start applying fiscal deficits, regardless of economic conditions, you're going to have a much more bumpy road ahead. So investors need to be prepared for that.
if you keep using fiscal deficits to this extent every year, even if the economy is still running relatively hot, what you risk is that inflation picks up again. And if inflation picks up again, Daniela, we know what Powell is going to do. The guy is going to retire soon, right? So his legacy, he doesn't want his legacy to be of a guy that let inflation run loose. He wants right. to be Volcker, not Arthur Burns. So he will try to react and tighten again. When he tightens again and mortgage rates are already at 7%, where is he going to send his mortgage rates? Where is he going to send his corporate borrowing rates? to seven to 8%. And so more corporates and more households over time will be forced to face these higher and higher interest rates. And that's bound to break the economy at some point. So it might seem that this fiscal deficit helps the private sector, but if you instead use it at the wrong time, you only increase the inflation risks, you increase the reaction of the Federal Reserve, and ultimately you will hurt the consumers. So I think there is a risk there. Where I don't agree necessarily is this UK comparison. Because the U.S. issues the global reserve currency of the world. That's the dollar. Everybody needs dollars. Everybody wants dollars. In Brazil, they're selling soybeans in dollars. In China, they're, se they're selling goods and services in dollars. We have built a system around the dollar. We haven't built a system around the British pound, the sterling. So that's why when you play with fire in the UK, you get these bond vigilantes reactions. They're much harder to get in the US, but what you could get is inflation instead in the US. Data has since shown that the economy expanded by 3.1% between the fourth quarter of 2022 and 2023, and analysts are upgrading their forecasts for this year too, on the back of signs that the labor market has remained more resilient than many economists feared. Also included in Monday's proposals was a request for $895 billion for the overall defense and national security budget, an increase of just a 1% rise over the 2024 budget because of a deal struck with Congress last year to avoid a government default. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.